And welcome back everyone to Between Bells on Cheddar. I'm Baker Machado. Our relationship to our pets is constantly progressing, similar to the way that society views how we treat our four-legged friends. So to reflect that, starting today, Petco will no longer sell shock collars for pets at any of their locations. This also comes amid a pet adoption boom that we're seeing in this country as more people are staying at home because of the pandemic. So joining us to discuss all of this is Petco CEO Ron Coughlin. Ron, great to have you here. Thanks so much for joining us. So let's talk about your company's big decision. As a pet owner myself, I know a lot of us applaud this decision. So what made you guys at Petco feel that it was time now to stop selling these shock collars? Well, first, thanks for having me. And you, you highlighted a few. First is our relationship with our pets uh, is changing. We're spending more time with our pets. And astoundingly, there are more and more pets going into households. B of A just did a study, and they found that 37% of households have new pets. So what we see is this relationship getting stronger. We see more pets going into the household having training needs. And um, it just didn't align with our mission of improving lives for pets and pet parents to continue to sell these shock collars that create fear, anxiety, aggression, et cetera. Uh, the other thing, Ron, that's really fascinating about the, the pet shop industry right now, especially with you guys, is the evolution of how we take care of our dogs. We're giving them better food. We're giving them better toys. <laughs> and it's also interesting to see the evolution of you guys at Petco. You're kind of now promoting your guy, uh, yourselves as a wellness company. Um, what made you guys wanted to start to take that route uh, for the company? You know, it really started two years ago when we got rid of artificial ingredients and artificial colors of all of our foods. It was a hundred million dollar bet. I came and talked to you at that time. And uh, that bet worked in terms of the relationship we have with our customers, but it also worked from a business standpoint. And it really brought back the soul of the company. The soul of the company is about improving lives and being a health and wellness company. Think about us as a CVS and a Whole Foods of the pet space. And that's really why we made the decision today. Electricity belongs in your microwave, but it does not belong in your pet. Uh, very good point there, Ron. Uh, despite the pandemic, you guys are uh, your seventh consecutive quarter of growth. What are you guys really attributing that to? Is it because we've seen this huge influx of people who are adopting because of the pandemic? What are you attributing a lot of those, those sales successes to? Because a lot of businesses have not done well during the pandemic. Yeah, we've been really focused on our customers and helping our customers. So first, we created a safe environment for them to come and, and shop. Second, we expanded our offering online. So whether it's curbside pickup or whether it's shipped from store that allowed us to get things to customers faster, that's been very powerful. Um, our digital business um, has gotten more and more customers and providing more services. And then our services, whether it's our phenomenal groomers, whether it's launching online training, or the most rapid expansion of a vet network in history, where we're up to 100 from a standing start two years ago, we'll be up to 140 by January, eventually getting to 800. And what's significant about that is 70% of pets don't get the vet care they need because of affordability. And we're driving an affordable vet care concept into our stores and the customers, it's really resonating for customers. I'm glad you bring that up, Ron. Is that how you feel like the pet care distinguishes you from the myriad of other competitors that you have out there from PetSmart, Chewy really doing well with the D to C, um, you know, pet shopping experience as well. Is the health and wellness aspect, is, is that what's separating you from your competitors here? Absolutely. We made the decision on artificial ingredients, artificial flavors. We're the only national player to this date that has done that. We're now making the decision on um, uh, shock collars, affordable vet care. These are all things that line up with our mission of improving lives. If you go to the mission of every single one of those companies, whether it is the large scale mass players, whether it's the people in retail pet or online pet that you cited, not one of them has the welfare of the pet in their mission. It's all about customer access. It's all about the products that they provide. But nobody's mission is to improve the lives of pets and pet parents, only Petco. 
Uh, Ron, obviously a lot of concern about the coronavirus when it comes to retail sales. Um, they're expecting potentially a 25% drop in foot traffic for the busy holiday season. Uh, how concerned are you about foot traffic in your stores for the holiday season and, and in terms of sales and revenue for you guys? Yeah, let me start by, by saying we consider ourselves an, an omni retailer. So whether they're coming to our stores, whether they're going to our, our uh, great Petco.com or our app, um, we just want to help them. And so we see traffic shift between those two. But like you said, we've seen uh, more customers buying more. The other thing that we have that a lot of these retailers don't have is we have our services. So whether that be training, whether that be grooming, whether that be veterinary services, we have reasons to come to our stores beyond that. And then lastly, we do such a great job with our Halloween merchandise. My dog, Yummy, has been a, a hot dog. He's been a taco. <laughs> Uh, people have a lot of fun at Halloween and then at Christmas or Hanukkah. They have great costumes as well as great toys uh, for the pets. So we've done really well at, at holiday. I don't see a reason why this year would be any different. Yeah, my dog Martin was a taco last year. A lot of pressure now, Ron, to find out what he's going to be this year. So maybe we got to find that out pretty soon. Uh, Ron Conglin is the CEO of Petco. Great to have you here, Ron. Thank you so much for joining us.